sums where it was taken. There is no right, there is none righteous, no, not one. That means no one is acceptable to God in his or in her own self. Even the, the prophet Isaiah, right, being a prophet of God, admitted that his righteousness is like filthy rags before God. And the reason is quite simple. We still have the, the sinful human nature in ourselves. It may not reign, and it does not reign among those born of God, right? But it does remain. The sinful nature remains. <coughs> that the sinful nature of those born again believers do not reign, but it does remain in them. Don't be surprised that, you know, when, when you want to go to church or do some church activities, you know, something is whispering into your ears, you know, you have a lot of things to do. <laughs> you know, why go to church? You know? Don't think that the still small voice only comes from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the still small voice usually comes from your own sinful nature. <laughs> Have you seen, there, there is one, uh, one post, it, it's actually a news, you know. Uh, pastor impregnated 20 of his members and said, <coughs> Holy Spirit asked him to do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's not the Holy Spirit. I can guarantee you, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's his sinful nature. <clears throat> the sinful nature remains. But it should not reign. Right? It should not reign because the Holy Spirit is here also. The Spirit lusts against the, the flesh or the sinful nature. They are contrary one to another. But let the Holy Spirit have control rather than the sinful nature. Amen? Amen? And because of that sinful nature, everything we do is tainted with sin. Even the Old Testament, even the Old Testament uh, law, love your neighbor as yourself. We can only, we can only apply that to our immediate family. Not to others. <laughs> I will admit that because that is true. But again, that is not that is not what God wants. And that is an Old Testament uh, law. In the New Testament, love one another as I have loved you. This is a higher, this is a higher standard of love. <coughs> God is commanding us. This is not, uh, this is not optional. It is for us to obey. Love one another as I have loved you. But I have to confess. I am breaking that law almost every time that I breathe. I will be telling a lie if I tell you that I love you just as Christ loves you. Yeah. <coughs> I'll be telling a lie. But I have to admit I am sinning because I am breaking the law almost every moment of my life. So even if, if I do something good to you, right, the love that I have for you does not measure up to God's standard. If God wants 
Probably it would be already excellent if that is 50%. And because of that sinful nature that is in us, uh, that corrupts everything we do, we are not acceptable to God in our own selves. God wants perfect obedience. Nothing more, nothing less. And we don't have that. Right? So, <clears throat> We are only accepted in the beloved. Because God accepted our substitute, our representative, Jesus Christ, before Him. He accepted us also. Amen? Amen? We are accepted on the basis of Jesus Christ alone. Plus nine. All right. Let us see the third verse. And raised us up with Him. And seated us with him in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Note the action words of, or verbs. Made alive, raised up, and seated are in the past tense. And that is us. And that us is the recipient of the divine actions. In other words, the divine actions were intended for the us. At the time Paul was writing this epistle, were the us, Paul and the Ephesian believers, were the us, Paul and Ephesian believers, already resurrected personally, that's the question, and seated in, heavenly, in heaven personally? The obvious answer is no. <coughs> Who actually or personally was made alive, resurrected, and seated in heaven? Let us now read Ephesians 1.20. Which he, that is God, brought about in Christ when he raised him, that is raised Christ, from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians 2.6 says, God has raised us up or resurrected us and made us sit together in heavenly, in heaven, in Christ. Now it is clear that literally we have not been raised or resurrected yet and we are not yet seated in heaven. No one needs to convince us of this empirical reality, right? So God's action of raising us up and making us sit together in heaven was not done in ourselves. He did it for us in Christ. Again, this verse reinforces the meaning of in Christ as not in ourselves. So he raised us up. The action is intended for us, but the action was done in Christ, not in ourselves. Okay? <clears throat> Let's consider the second uh, groups, the second group of verses with adjectives attached to in him and in Christ. Let us study the verses one by one. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. It is clear that no one should convince us that we are not yet perfect in ourselves. As James 3.2 says, For in many things we offend all. But the verse says we can be presented perfect in Christ. Again, perfect not in ourselves, but in Christ. Let us see the next verse. And ye are complete in him. That is in Christ. God has begun a good work in us through the Holy Spirit, but this work is still far from complete and will be completed only at the second coming of Christ. That is what Philippians 1 verse 6 says. He who has begun a good work in you shall complete it in the day of Jesus Christ. God has begun, <clears throat> but the verse says, we are already complete, not in ourselves, but in Christ. Right? Let us see the third verse. To them who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. The context demands being fully sanctified. To sanctify means to set aside for holy use, or simply to make holy. In and of ourselves, we are not yet fully sanctified. 
while we are in the process of sanctification through the operation of the Holy Spirit in us. This process is not yet complete. However, the verse says we are already fully sanctified, not in ourselves, but in Christ. From the survey of six verses containing the expression in Christ or in Him, it is clear that in Christ means not in ourselves. <coughs> the actions done by God for us were done not in ourselves, <coughs> but in Christ. God did some things for us. He has blessed us, made us acceptable, raised us up, and made us sit together in heaven. But it is very clear all these divine actions done for us were done outside of us and not in ourselves. All these divine actions were done in Christ. It is that clear? Amen. Right? By the way, these are only six verses. There are many. I can guarantee you. Right? So, the meaning of in Christ, when it is followed or preceded by a verb, right, or an adjective, it means the verb or the adjective is actually intended for us. It is intended for us. But the action or the adjective is found in Christ. <clears throat> Para lang mapa natin, maitindihan natin mabuti. <clears throat> Yung ating unang uh, <coughs> See this, these verbs, right? These are divine actions. Blessed us, accepted us, raised us up, seated us in heaven, right? But all of these are said to be in Christ. So we are actually, we are the object of the action. We are the beneficiaries. We are the intended recipients of the action. But the action itself was done in Christ. The action is intended for us to benefit us. But the action is not done in ourselves in our own person. It was done in Christ. In Christ as our substitute before God. As our representative before God. As our surety before God. Right? So, do not be, do not be confused here. Because some will say, who was raised up? Us. Who was seated? In heaven, us. Who was blessed with all the spiritual blessings? Us. And who did, did God accept? Us. Linguistically, right? uh, grammatically, the, the direct recipient is the us 
of this action. If you do not see this, right? If you do not see this, you have reason to believe that yes, it was done in our own person. But once you see this, it means it's not done. Yeah, it is intended for you. It is intended to benefit you, but the action itself is done in Christ. Why is that? Because God cannot do this directly to us. Why? Because of our sins. Because of our sins, God cannot do this directly to us. It would violate His justice. It would violate His holiness. If God does this directly to sinners like us. God is so holy, He could not even look at sin. His eyes are too pure to behold evil. So he will not do this directly to us. Unless right, our sins are removed. And our sins are removed only by Jesus Christ. Right? Right. So let's continue on. In Christ, therefore, means not in ourselves directly and individually, but in and through our substitute, mediator, representative, and surety before God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay? That is what it means by in Christ. Why not be so? Well, because of sin. God cannot and will not directly and individually deal with us except to punish us for our sins. You know what? <clears throat> when Jesus comes again, He will hand over the kingdom to God the Father. Right? That means Jesus Christ as the Messianic King will, stop to, will cease to be King as the God-man King. Right? He will be as king in the triune God, but not as the messianic king anymore. First Corinthians 15 says, when Jesus comes, Christ comes again and resurrects all, that is uh, the good, the saved, and the unsaved, once that comes, he will hand over the kingdom to the Father. He will no longer be the messianic king. And therefore he will not also be the high priest anymore. In other words, there will not be a mediator between God and men. And what will God do to the unrepentant sinners? He will deal with them directly. Because there is no more mediator between God and man and sinful man, he will deal directly with sinful men. And what would he do? He, he would punish them for their sins. Because that is what justice demands. The only thing God can do directly and individually to us is to punish us for our sins. That is why we have a mediator between God and man. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because without the mediator, the only thing God can do to us directly and individually is punish us for our sins. Right? <clears throat> His own self-consistency demands that He punish the guilty. This is the only direct action God can take on sinners. If He wants to do anything other than punish them, say, show them favor and mercy, then he needed to have a guarantor, a mediator who will act as their substitute and representative before his own divine justice that demands their death. This is a most fundamental truth revealed in the Bible. 
It is why Jesus is both sacrificed for sins and mediator or high priest. A sacrifice he took our place and did for us what God required of us, which we could never do for ourselves. And God did in his in him everything he ever wanted to do for us. As our mediator representative before God, he received from God everything God ever wanted to give us. So lahat ng gustong gawin ng Diyos sa atin, ginawa niya kay Christ as our substitute and representative. And everything that God wants to give us, ibinigay niya rin kay Christ to dispense to us. Right? <clears throat> so that is the meaning of in Christ. Therefore, in Christ, therefore, means not in ourselves directly and individually, but in and through our substitute, mediator, representative, and surety, our guarantor before God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right, now we know what in Christ or in Him means. We are ready to understand the real meaning of election in Christ. Chose. Is another verb attached to in Christ. He, God the Father, chose us in Him, in Christ. Just like the other verbs attached to in Christ that we have investigated, chose us in Him means God chose us not in ourselves, directly and individually, but in Christ. The divine action of election intended by God for us was done actually and personally in Christ, not in ourselves directly and individually. What does this mean? It simply means that God chose Christ for us to be our substitute, mediator and guarantor. This is why Christ is called the elect, the chosen one of God. The direct and individual election of Calvinism and Arminianism is therefore not in accordance with the intended meaning of Paul when he wrote, God chose us in him before the foundation of the world. It means that when, God, when Paul says, God has chosen us in him, it was actually, the action was actually done in Christ. The action of electing is is intended for us to benefit us but the action is that itself is done in Christ in other words it was Christ who was elected in our place Amen. it makes sense right yes it makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense in the first place the question would be asked why will God select you <laughs> yes Makes sense also. <laughs> Why did God choose you? You are a sinner. You are a rebel. rebel. Why did God choose you in the first place? Right? It all makes sense now. <clears throat> Unless we read the implications of election in Christ, let me summarize our discussion so far. Biblical election means God chose one or a few in order to bless the many who were not chosen. Biblical election does not mean the rejection or abandonment of those not elected, but their blessing instead to the elect. We are said to be chosen in Him or in Christ before the foundation of the world. In Christ means divine actions intended for us were actually and personally done in Christ and not in ourselves. Election in Christ means Christ was elected for us in our behalf, in our place, as our substitute before God. Election in Christ means there is no direct and individual election of people, but only the direct and individual election of Christ for the people. From the foregoing conclusions, election in Christ is substitutionary election. Christ being elected in behalf of and in the place of and for the people. Yung po ang ibig sabihin ng election in Christ. You need a break? Yes. Okay, let's have, uh, let's have 10 minutes break.
sensible way, not just randomly, uh, at least he gives us a hint. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you can see that this, uh, the importance of who is Panganay, who is the firstborn and secondborn, is actually minimal in the case of uh, Jacob and Esau because they were twins. Mm -hmm. It's only for, perhaps a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's not, and, and Jacob was holding on to uh, the leg of, uh, right? Okay, so, so that's my first uh, reflection. The other is, even in human terms, when we uh, elect people to, to a position, to power, uh, a position of influence, the right intention is to bless the many also. Yeah. When we choose a president, a senator, a congressman, the purpose is supposed to bless the country, right? But we know the human uh, choices, we are corrupted and we corrupt the purpose of election to benefit ourselves because we have a politician, we we'll have more businesses and so on, etc. Right? Uh, what was my third? Uh, forget me. I was writing something. Uh, in, in my uh, research also, this verse uh, before the foundation of the world. Many uh, translations today are actually uh, translating in the wrong way because the original Greek says from the foundation of the world, not before the foundation of the world. Meaning, God acts in history. So, not in eternity past, you know, because like you said, mo yung eternity past, but which you philosophize only, nagiging mystical. Mystical yung uh, mystical philosophy ng iyari. But God is a uh, God, if the intention is to reveal, He acted in fact in, at the beginning of human uh, creation of human beings. So from the foundation of the world, not before the foundation of the world. You know, this is just a reflection. I may be wrong, please correct me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I am inclined to one, to accept uh, the translation with uh, the preposition before the foundation of the world. I believe that God, uh, having uh, a poor balance because of his omniscience, God knew what would happen. And uh, the plan of redemption was not an afterthought. In other words, Adam sinned and then he devised, he devised a way. No. <clears throat> Even before Adam sinned, he knew what he would do. There was a plan. Before the creation, he already knew. In fact, everything. Yeah. In fact, he knows who will repent, who will not repent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that does not nullify your free will. <laughs> I 
I, I believe he had a plan before the creation of the world. He had a plan. Uh, he knew. He knew that Aaron would fall. And he knew what to do. And Aaron fell because he had a plan. <laughs> Uh, and according to Ephesians uh, 1, 11, he had a purpose uh, for Christ, even before the, the creation of the world. <clears throat> now, Revelation 13, verse 8, I believe that the correct translation there is... Uh, at the beginning uh, of the world, where it says, Jesus Christ is the Lamb slain at the foundation of the world. Not before the foundation of the world, but at the foundation of the world, or at the beginning of the world. Mm. In King James Popuya, uh, the original language is uh, before. Mm. Even in uh, ASB, NASB. Uh, I saw an article that says that all of these translations are wrong. It says in the Greek it is actually wrong. I don't know if that's correct. I just saw it. I'm not a theologian. We study of ancient languages. You have to look at the original. Siguro magigitan natin if you use ESOR side by side para lang. English, King James, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> if you have uh, no, the, <coughs> the Greek and the Hebrew interlinear Bibles, mm -hmm. is available, uh, where the translation actually is one one to one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this word translated, uh, this word in the original uh, Hebrew translated directly into English. <clears throat> you will uh, read the English uh, translation, uh, you will, it, will, it usually does not make sense. Right? If you read the English translation directly, one on one, one to yes. one, it will not make sense. <clears throat> That's why the translators actually, after uh, translating one a word for word, they rearrange the English, the English translation, in order to make sense. Because your subject predicate is yes. not that yes, uh, translation. Yes. So. Um, <coughs> Susuga ko lang yung sinabi ni Kuya ni Brother Bill. Uh, <coughs> we, we now know that, uh, alam na natin, no? Through el yung sa earlier na natin, na the door of salvation was open for both of these men. Okay, Jacob, Jack, and Isa. The, it's, um, it's not about salvation. It's not about heaven and hell. It's about blessings, right? But uh, based on dito sa ina natin, in Christ, not at seeing you siguro yung more, uh, more sensitive question would be uh if not in terms of salvation but in, uh, not in terms of heaven and hell can we really really Hi. know for sure uh in terms of application sa atin or may I ask the question directly why did he chose you why did he, did he elect you why did he elect uh, the jacob instead of esau i think that that's the more Relevant question, because now we 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 know that we are all chosen, elected in Christ, right? In terms of our salvation, in terms of blessing us, uh, all of this in terms was done in Christ for the benefit of us. It's very 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 clear, crystal clear. I think uh, somehow uh, I don't know how you would explain this or uh, assure us in the word. Uh, how then now God chooses, uh, uh, chose Jacob instead of Esau? In terms of blessing, aside from the fact that it was prophesied, 
Okay. Yung kay Jacob and Esau. So how would you really explain this one in terms of blessing? Uh, I'd say we need to be careful when uh, we talk about uh, people who are actually, who have play, played a role in what we call as redemptive history. Okay? <clears throat> that is the history uh, recorded in the Bible until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are people who were elected or chosen in order to have a role in that history. Now, their election was a sovereign election. In other words, it was God who determined whom he would elect sovereignly. It was out of his own uh, good pleasure and will. And because it was a sovereign uh, decision from God, dun sa redemptive plan niya, right? like for instance, he elected, he elected uh, Pilate, Pilate in order to have a role in redemptive plan. Okay? And role niya is to uh, condemn the Lord to death. <clears throat> Although he was his hands, Nevertheless, uh, it was it was God who actually determined who would play a role in uh, in God's redemptive plan. Now, for those people who whom God has actually chosen to play a role in the redemptive plan, <coughs> wala tayong wajan. You cannot say. Jan applicable yung God hardens those whom He would harden. Right? Applicable yan don. But outside the plan of redemption, diyan nagpokan yung free will natin. I would even say that God suspended the free will of those whom He elected in the plan of redemption to have a role in the plan of redemption because that was a sovereign plan. But outside that plan, where majority of the people are situated right? the free will God allows the free will to operate I have the impression when he chose Pharaoh for example he okay, yes. chose you for this very purpose even yes. never yes, yes, yes. they already exhibited certain uh, behaviors okay certain cruelties for example in the case of Pharaoh even before God hardened